What is up, everybody? Hey, this is Kelly Cook with this another edition of YouTube Live on Everything Phoenix, our amazing YouTube media channel. All right, guys, so we're going to jump in here. We're talking about some stuff uh, happening with the housing market, the inflation, jobs report. What is going on? What does that mean for 2024 with Phoenix's housing market? We're going to touch base on that because, guys, you don't know where you're going unless you know where you've been. And so what is the additional inflation report that came out and the um, jobs report? These economic conditions have to do with the housing report and really the outlook for the rest of 2024. I'm glad you asked because we're going we're to discuss that and address that here today on our live edition. So if you are watching the live, we really appreciate you doing that. I know a lot of people actually watch our live, but don't comment. If you guys want to comment, you want to let me know where you're watching from. It certainly helps out the algorithm to curate our content the best way possible. So please, by all means, feel free to do that and ask a question or two or 10, your choice. I'll be sure to address them and we'll get rocking and rolling, guys. We're covering the Arizona, Arizona Coyotes situation debacle and we're uh, covering the housing market, where we stand today with the economic news and conditions, some development issues and more water, more water issues, guys. Water is a hot topic because we are in the desert. Now there's plenty of water, spoiler alert, plenty of water, for anything that you want to do in our lifetime, unless you plan on living to be over 100 years and you were born just this morning, you have enough water living in the Phoenix area, assured and guaranteed. So that's interesting. How do I know that? Well, we'll talk about that here today a little bit more. Um, and, and some other things too, guys, we'll dive right in. So if you don't mind, just um, ask any questions. If you're watching a replay, dive in as well, but call us with any questions you have as well at 480-660-5974, and we can have a conversation off um, offline here about whatever your questions are. So we're going to jump in, and I'm going to share my screen here, guys. Um, here we go. Here are the headlines from last week. Surging inflation fears sent markets tumbling and Fed officials scrambling. That is a um, somewhat accurate. As you know, it's a little sensationalized because it is the media and that's what they're going to do guys so let's find out exactly what's going on well in short what's going on is that inflation came in higher than expected and that caught to caught the uh, marketplace really off guard a little bit As a matter of fact right here you can see it caught them off guard with just how stubborn price pressures have been to start 2024. um this week was filled with bad economic news with each day literally bringing another dose of reality about inflation guys what is the definition of inflation. I'm glad you asked, guys. The definition of inflation is too much money chasing too little goods. So we have got to let what is in the current economy continue to filter through the uh, the different sectors to make sure we are not pouring more gasoline on the fire. And unfortunately, because we keep printing more money, adding more money to the economy, at least uh, that we have been doing, it's unfortunately causing a little bit of problem right now with getting the um, inflation to die back down. So that's what we're currently stand. So now let's go back here and let's continue to look at this article. All right. So you can see right here that um, everything was caught off guard. Stocks slumped Friday as the Dow Jones coughed up nearly 500 points, dropping 2.4%. Um, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me, Harvard economist Jason Furman told CNBC last week. We've now had three months in a row of prints coming in above just about what everyone expected. It's time to change the way we're thinking about inflation moving forward, guys. That is not a good sign. So now we could have, I could have made a um, a clickbait title for this and said, no future hope or everything's going to blow up or all these cool things or not so cool things that maybe would have got someone to click on this video. And maybe in the future I will because we need more people sharing our videos, guys. So by the way, if you don't mind just sharing this to your friends, I'd really appreciate it. It would really mean the world to me to help grow our channel. We want to make this to be the place to go for all Arizona housing, economic, real estate news. All right. So now we are talking inflation. It did not come in well. What does that mean? Well, that means that the Fed right now is probably not looking to decrease rates anytime real soon. Now, if we go to this other report about the jobs market april 2024 job report u.s economy added 303 jobs <laughs> okay guys now normally we'd be celebrating this 
normally. We'd be happy. We'd be clapping up and down because jobs are being created. People are being employed. This is good, right? Well, it is to an extent, but not when you are trying to slow down the economy. We've had the Federal Reserve trying to slow down the economy by keeping rates artificially high so that people will hopefully have too high of payments. They'll have the ability not to borrow money, and therefore the economy will slow back down. But unfortunately, that's not happening right now fast enough. And so maybe, just maybe, rates will stay high longer than we all anticipate. You can see right here that April 2024 jobs report showed the unemployment rate dropped slightly, dropped, not increased, dropped. The Federal Reserve guys wants the number to go up, and it's not happening in March compared to 3.9% in February. This is the 26th consecutive month the unemployment rate has remained below 4%. The 26th consecutive month, guys, that's, the Fed does not want this to happen. The Fed wants to get this number up. They would probably love nothing more than to see an unemployment rate of four and a half to five percent, or frankly, maybe even higher. And that would help them and give them the firepower, the excuse to now start bringing down the federal funds rate. But right now, guys, this is not looking like it's going to happen. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and go to another article. OK, U.S. It's from Wells Fargo here. U.S. GDP growth isn't cooling off after all. Expect more jobs, more inflation, therefore and fewer rate cuts, Wells Fargo says. And there's, of course, Chairman Powell looking a little um, befuddled, befuddled as to what in the world he's going to say and what in the world's going to happen moving forward. Now, guys, remember, we talked about this. Vegas odds, Las Vegas odds, you can bet on everything, right, says that in June is a 97% chance that the Fed will decrease and cut by 250 basis points the um the federal funds rate, right? And bring down a quarter of a percentage point. But at this point, those odds may start to change. So we'll keep you updated on what happens there because I wouldn't be surprised if they do change considering the fact that this economic news continues to come out and out and it's not good for rate cuts, all right? And we need that. Housing affordability needs rate cuts, guys. Um, but we'll see what happens. Now, here's my solution. Now you see that headline? I'm gonna bring it back here. Here's my solution, guys. I think that one thing we could do to make housing more affordable is to increase. Okay, stay with me now. Did you guys know that the capital, not increase this, uh, yeah, increase this, the capital gains exemption for owner occupied residents when it comes to paying taxes is currently capped at $250,000 tax free gain when you sell your owner occupied residence if you are a single um, filer on the tax returns. Guys, by the way, happy tax day. It is April 15th. And I'm sure we're all thrilled to know that today is tax day in America. But I digress. It's $500,000 for the limit when it comes to a married couple um, selling their own occupied residence and filing jointly. So I think that that number is outdated. Guys, did you know that that actually was passed into law in 1997? Now we're talking about inflation. Do we think that there has been some inflation in the economy since 1997? The answer is yes. The answer is a resounding yes. We're just covering inflation right now and that is not doing well. And so if there's a lot of inflation over the course of that many years, I mean, how many years is that? 24, 27 years. Um, why has the capital gains tax exemption not increased and adjusted for inflation accordingly, which I believe it should. Now, I, I pulled a couple articles here because this is interesting, guys. In 2022, the National Association of Realtors endorses a bill to increase the home gain exclusion. Okay, and what they are proposing that they did uh, just a couple of years ago is that the capital gains exclusion doubles and increases from 250 and 500 to 500 and 1 million for a married couple filing jointly for capital gains exemption. Guys, do you know how many times I have had conversation with sellers? Right now, the past 18 months, I say, Kelly, I, I would absolutely be selling, but the problem is I'm going to be taxed too much on the gain above 250 or 500 if I'm married and filing jointly, okay? And I don't want to pay that tax, and frankly, the rates are high, and I don't know if I want to trade those dollars to get into another house. And you know what? They're not wrong in saying that. There's some merit to saying that, no question about it. So I think it's time I'm calling on Congress to act on this. You've got to be able to get people to move in this economy. And it has to be more than just a single lever of pulling or reducing rates. 
if you have inflation in the economy, which we clearly do, and it's not going away at this time, you can't reduce rates. That's the number one thing that the Fed will do to combat high interest rates, guys. And so this article right here is a good one because it talks about how we should increase the um, capital gains exemption from $500,000 to $1 million. If you're with me, give me a thumbs up in the comments below. When you watch this, guys, please feel free to do that. I would love to know what your thoughts are on that idea. Now, let's keep it moving, okay? Because I have another um, article about this as well. If you don't believe me, look at this. The home sale may leave you in a tax shock. Here's how to reduce your capital gains tax bill because there are so many people who have that. Check it out, guys. Right now, if you sold a home, you're probably subject to that. Now, I believe it gave an average right here. In 2023, home sellers made a profit across the board average profit of $121,000 on a typical median price single family house in, um, in, in, in America, right? So that's a lot of money. Now, obviously that's below the 250, but that's the average, okay? Single homeowners can do the 250 and the 500. It says right there, we know that. But what can they do? If you have um, profit gain above 250 or 500 and you are subject to taxes, did you know what the rates are? Here they are, okay? It is 15% for long-term capital gains between people who make between 444, I'm sorry, $44,000 and $492,000. If you're above $492,301 in your yearly income, then you are at 20% on long-term capital gains. Now, if you're filing jointly, that number is between um, 89 and 553. You're at 15%. Anything that you make, anyone who makes below that is at zero, still above that number, which is nice. Um, and if you make above $553,000 a year, then you are taxed at 20% on that amount above two fifty dollars or $500,000. That's a lot of money, guys. That's a lot of dough, right? So they're saying how to reduce this. Well, there's only really one way, and that is to increase your cost basis, right? Now, I am not a CPA, guys. There could be other ways to do this. I'm just giving you what the article says, which is one way you could do it, and that is to increase your cost basis. Well, how do you do that? Well, you do that right here. You can increase your home's basis by adding certain improvements you made to the property to prolong its useful life, according to the IRS. For example, you could track, uh, you could tack on the cost of home additions, updated systems, landscaping, or new appliances. But the cost of repairs and maintenance generally don't count, all right? So again, please, please consult your local CPA tax advisor on this, as I am not licensed to give tax advice. But this is some of the stuff that's out there, guys, you can find on the internet that I'm bringing to your attention that would obviously help you potentially save on your taxes if you're looking to sell and have a gain above those numbers and therefore you have potential taxes to pay in that scenario. Okay. Now, here, if you don't believe me, here's a calculator I found that I think is very important, okay, that we're going to go over. And that is, what was $1 worth in 1997? It is worth $1.95. Today, that is almost a 100% increase on the amount of inflation that we've had since 1997. So if I go in here and I put in, I'm a married couple, and I put in filing jointly, then I put in I have a $500,000 limit. By today's standards, what would that calculate? That would calculate purchasing power of about 972996 guys. There it is right there, 996 Okay, so I think this is in order. This is not out of the ordinary to ask Congress to act on an inflation-adjusted basis to increase the capital gains exemption from 500 if you're filing jointly as a married couple, to $1 million because right here it proves that the inflation is equal to about $1 million, meaning it is at 972996 only off by what? About twenty seven. dollars thousand dollars guys this is in order so i'm calling on congress right now if you watch the everything phoenix youtube channel here to please increase the cost of the capital gains exemption and that will get the inventory turning a little more and therefore hopefully make housing more affordable for people to buy as well as hopefully uh mess with the uh rates in the future as well assuming inflation can be under control all right we have beat that horse dead but i'm gonna stop right now to see that hopefully everyone understands what I'm referring to here, guys. I think it's very reasonable. It is adjusted for inflation, guys. Do you know how many things across America, especially when it comes to government um, aspects, are adjusted for inflation? I guarantee you, 
pay to any government employee has been adjusted for inflation since 1997. I guarantee it. And other things too as well. So why can we not adjust for inflation the capital gains exemption on the taxes to get people a another incentive to want to sell their house, get some more fluidity in the housing market, and therefore hopefully overall bring down housing affordability. I think it's a good idea that we should consider. All right, going back to my screen. And we are talking about the Cromford report right now, guys. The dollar city by dollar volume by city, you can see right now that the transaction number, the dollar volume has gone down. We've been talking about this for the last several weeks, guys. You can see right here in 2023 to 2024 in Phoenix, we had $9 million of volume. We had 8.1 in Scottsdale. That's a lot. Scottsdale is right behind Phoenix and Scottsdale is not the second largest suburb by population in the Phoenix area. It is actually Mesa and Mesa comes in number three, but Scottsdale has a much higher price point and that's what drives this metric. We can see right now, <clears throat> if you look back to last year, 22 to 23, that Phoenix was at 11.2 million, Scottsdale 8.3, Mesa 4.8, and you can see the comparison, guys. Check that out. That's what's interesting, right? Because in 2022, the market was on fire, at least for the first half of the year. And you can see in this scenario that uh, Mesa, for example, went from 4.8 down to 3.7. Gilbert went from 3.4 down to 2.7 and so on and so forth. Now, Phoenix did decline as well, but not as a big of a number as some of these other suburbs. Now, Scottsdale did not decline that much at all, although it did decline in volume. Guys, please understand, we are talking volume. We're not talking price point. Prices have gone up as we covered here elaborately on the YouTube Live Everything Phoenix channel, okay? Over the past several years. Now, they've gone up year over year from 23 to 24 as well in January year over year, February year over year, and March year over year. So it's continuing to go up in terms of the price point, which is interesting because everyone wants the sky to fall. And guys, frankly, the sky fell. That would be good, I guess, for housing affordability. That's not a bad thing when it comes to that. That's for sure. But people buy a monthly payment. They don't necessarily buy the price. They buy the price secondarily. And so if we could just get rates to come down a little bit because we can get inflation under control, then we have the ability to have housing be more affordable. But at the same time, while this is all happening, we have got to continue to build more supply across America, especially in the cities that are the fastest growing, like the cities in the Sun Belt and the Southwest part of America. All right. So guys, you can see the dollar volume is down. This is just a graph to show you that, yes, in fact, um, transaction count, dollar count is down across the board from year over year everywhere in the greater Phoenix metro area. Okay. This is a graph here to see if you want to see the bigger example. Let me just show it up for you here. Okay. You can see that Chandler still leads the way, guys. The Southeast Valley is cranking. Chandler and Gilbert are one and two, and the Crawford Market Index is well above the balanced number of 110 points on the CMI index. So this is showing you that it's a strong market in the uh, East Valley. You also have Tempe and Mesa, two other suburbs that are kind of no, no, known as East Valley suburbs, and they are four of the top five round out our East Valley suburbs, guys. So the East Valley is cranking. Now, a lot of new construction is in East Valley and new construction is driving the market right now more so than resale as we covered last week. You also have Glendale in the Northwest Valley that's doing very well. It's down, but it's still at 170 on the CMI coming in at number three. Scottsdale at number nine. Pure rounds out number 10, uh, that spot being at 112, which is still above the 110 balanced market figure. And so at 112, Pure, technically you are in a seller's market. All right, let's cover some um, let's cover some things going on with development in the Phoenix area, guys. The Arizona Coyotes, oh my goodness. Are they really moving to Utah? No way. Guys, this is the latest uh, rumor. Now, I just went over last week. I just covered the fact that they were going to bid, bid on this land um, in North Scottsdale, which in the Scottsdale Business Corporate Corridor, which would be amazing, an amazing location, but it's not guaranteed because it is an auction. Frankly, I'm calling now on the Scottsdale, Arizona, I'm sorry, Arizona Public Land Department to uh, maybe um, just sell it to them. The opening bid is, is a lot of money. Just give it to them for that number. Keep the Arizona counties here in town. Don't make them bid because you know what's going to happen. Some other big uh, uh, company or investor is going to come in and just bid them up a little bit to make them pay more than what the opening bid is because that's the way auctions work. And so if we really want Arizona counties to stay in Phoenix, which would be awesome because remember, there's a junior county's program that plays out of tucson as well called the roadrunners 
And that gets complicated because they stay in Tucson. That provides some economic value to Tucson as well. We want the Coyotes to stay here in Arizona. I don't even play hockey, but I like sports and I like hockey. And I would love to stay, have them stay in Arizona because we know the economic value they provide to the city of Phoenix. So, guys, hopefully this doesn't happen, but this is the owner right there talking about how maybe, maybe at the end of the season, which, by the way, their last game is in two days here on the 17th of April against Edmonton. After that, there are probably going to be some announcements, and hopefully one of the announcements is that they are going to stay, as a, as a matter of fact, here in Phoenix. But we'll see, guys. This will be very, very disappointing that they move to Salt Lake City. So, uh, hopefully we'll see what happens there. Stay tuned to Arizona uh, to uh, Everything Phoenix right here on Everything uh, Phoenix Live channel. All right, now moving along, I want to cover U.S. counties with largest population growth, guys, because we talked about builders and, and making sure supply continues to run in the uh, economy to make sure that when things turn, hopefully with either uh, the capital gains is actually increasing or whether rates decreasing, that we have supply and uh, we're not getting behind the eight ball to keep housing affordable because we all know how it works. Supply works off of, uh, off of uh, simple economics 101 demand versus supply. If we don't have much supply and way more demand because people rush back into the market to buy homes, we are going to see a scenario in which prices will continue to increase, which will not help the overall housing affordability that we are trying to fix. Okay. But here you go. This is proof right here. Look at the Sun Belt and the southeastern, southwestern part of the United States. The three fastest growing counties in America right now are all located in Texas. And you can see the population increase. Harris County coming in at 53,000 people on the population increase, guys. That is huge. Then we have Collin County at 636, Montgomery County at 31, and then Maricopa County. This is the Phoenix area. Pretty much all of the greater Phoenix area is Maricopa County. And that it comes in at 30,000 people for a population increase from 22 to 23. You can see the population. Wow, look at that. Okay. Then you have Polk County in Florida. All right. And then guess what? The one, two, three, four, five, last five counties of the top 10 largest, fastest growing um, are on Texas, guys. So people are loving going to places where there is free enterprise. There is a low tax environment. Guys, you know that Texas and Florida both have zero state income tax. And Arizona has the lowest income tax for all the states in America that actually charge an income tax, a state income tax with a flat 2.5% state income tax. Whether you pay, whether you make a little or make a lot, you pay the same rate at 2.5%, which is kind of cool because that is driving businesses to come to our wonderful state, which is then providing employment opportunities and therefore providing a lot of economic good stuff. All right. So that's that. Now let's move on here. Okay. There's a 122-year-old Arizona hotel in the market after renovations. If you are an investor and you want to buy something that has somewhat of a symbolic um, nature to the state of Arizona, this might be the hotel for you. The historic Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee, Arizona is in the market for $12.5 million, and it just went through a large renovation. Guys, this was built in 1902. It's a historic landmark, which is really, really cool, and it is on the market for $12.5 million. So, guys, if you are looking at potentially buying something with some uh, nostalgia to it in Arizona, this could be the place for you. You can have the historic Copper Queen Hotel for a small fee of $12.5 million. Okay, moving on. Major industrial site to help Queen Creek compete for more manufacturers. Guys, Queen Creek is on the up and coming. Okay, now going back to the Crawford Report, Queen Creek comes in at 15 here. It is a buyer's market right now. So you have a buyer's market, meaning if you want to invest or buy a house, this could be a good time because it is poised to potentially go up, especially with the news that LG is putting in a huge battery plant in Queen Creek. There are the renderings right there. And there are two articles in the Business Journal, not just one, two, about LG and the major industrial site in Queen Creek. There is the campus for the LG Energy Solutions for a big, huge battery industrial plant. So guys, Queen Creek's up and coming. And you can see the um, uh, information right there. So zoom out right there. You can see where it approximately is off the new 24 um, interstate that just was built here recently, south of the Legacy Sports and Complex, or what used to be the Legacy Sports and Complex, right? And it is a, there's a lot of land right here, guys, in Queen Creek. And a lot of that is continuing to be built out. And you have a huge subdivision coming in way out here in the future as more and more homes continue to be built out in Queen Creek because there is a lot of land, guys. Look at all this land out here. There's a lot of land that developers are um, either secured or looking to secure to continue to buy um, and build homes to live out there and jobs are following. That is important. 
Okay. All right. Here we go. A few more things. Arizona's tallest apartment tower finally on track to start construction, guys. This is kind of cool. Why? Because this will be the largest, the largest building, tallest building, tallest building in the Phoenix area, guys. And there it is. It is going to be glass. It's going to be modern. It is 540 feet skyward, and it's called the Astra, the tallest tower in all of Arizona. It's coming, guys. Can you believe it? It is coming. It's going to be taller than the Chase Tower downtown by a little bit. 541 feet, and the Chase Tower currently stands at 483 feet. There will be a second tower that will span 34 floors and rise to 424 feet as well. So it's going to be two towers right here side by side. It's going to be awesome, guys, for the skyline of Phoenix. I'm excited about this. This is really cool. And by the way, I'll share my screen and show that picture. I realized I just wasn't, I wasn't sharing the screen. Let me share that with you here in a second. But first, Lori, Queen Creek is a beautiful place to live, especially when you have horses. I'll have to reach out to you. Please do. I would love to help out any way I possibly can. That's what we're about here. At the end of the day, we are realtors with Real Broker. Um, I've been a realtor now for 19 years in Arizona and would love to help you out. With any questions you have, buying, selling, or investing in real estate in Arizona, guys. Let me show my screen and show you this picture right here. That's the running of the Astra building, which will be the largest tower in all of Arizona when it's complete and finished. Pretty cool, right? All right, moving on. Um, Israeli water tech businesses, I, Arizona, for a potential partnership. Guys, we have talked about water a lot, and it's very important to continue to do so. But guys, as you know, I say all the time on this channel that Arizona is actually the second um, uh, uh, world leader for technology for water conservation. And the number one city is Tel Aviv, Israel. Well, this article right here is telling you that Tel Aviv and Israel, they want to uh, actually do a partnership with Phoenix and actually help potentially build not just better water technology, but one of those things is a desalinization plant in Mexico at Rocky Point. That's right. And they would do so because they already have those out there. They have to do that uh, where they live. And there's plenty of water, obviously, in the ocean. So they could actually build a desalinization plant in Mexico and pipe that water into Arizona and Phoenix for basically unlimited water use, which is awesome because we're in the desert and we could use, I guess, more water, even though we have an assured water supply in the ground for almost, almost all of the Phoenix suburbs. It would be great to have other options, of course, because at the end of the day, we need water to survive. It's the lifeblood of any civilization. But it talks about in this article, the uh, state officials brought together more than 20 Israeli water um, specialists and technology specialists to talk about upcoming new technology in the water conservation sector, right? And then, of course, right here is desalinization in Arizona's future. I think it is. Personally, guys, my bet is I think that is in the future of Arizona, uh, Arizona's uh, economy, and I think that's coming. But this major, this plan would be a $5.5 billion desalinization plant in Mexico at Rocky Point um, and proposing to reuse wa wastewater for drinking water through a $300 million project, to reuse wastewater through a $300 million dollar project guys so there's some money looking to be spent in the water conservation arena so anyways um this is good stuff i think it's all good stuff that we're um looking to do in the um phoenix economy in the future guys so that's really really cool all right and then uh we're talking about some uh new stuff happening with the colorado river district we'll get to you with more information on that next week that's a sneak peek right there all right last but not least guys let's do a final four recap Phoenix did an amazing job hosting the Final Four, and it made a lot of money, which is great for the, um, the tournament, guys, and is great for the city of Phoenix and all the suburbs. But Phoenix Final Four ranks among most attended in tournament history. That is good. Now Phoenix is on the map, okay, when it comes to um, hosting events, competing with Vegas and Los Angeles, okay? But there's a picture right there. Purdue lost in the championship game to UConn. Two juggernauts that said that squared off and UConn just put it on them in the second half and took home the national championship. So congratulations to the UConn Huskies. That's awesome. But there were over 74,000 attendees, the third highest attendance ever for an NCAA final. That is pretty, pretty cool. OK, so there were millions and millions and millions of dollars. Uh, that were spent and earned and injected into the local Phoenix economy, guys. I am very cool. But let me just make a bigger screen here because that's really cool to see the awesome big picture. Guys, I was there. I was there. And it was awesome. I've never been to a Final Four or a basketball game, frankly, in a football arena, football stadium. That was sweet. 
And uh, it wasn't that bad, guys. I could see the, the court actually really well. We were tickets that were uh, about midway up, and uh, we could see the court pretty well and uh, see what was going on. So I, I am just pleased to have my city, the Phoenix area, represent the Final Four and did such a great job in doing so from uh, the safety aspect to the logistical aspects and, of course, to the actual event itself. Nothing but good feedback was given to us from people I've heard of or read articles on when it came to the Final Four this uh, past week or so in the Phoenix area, guys. So kudos to the NCAA for choosing Phoenix and kudos to the city of Phoenix for hosting an amazing event, guys. If you have any questions about anything related to real estate, development, coffee shops, resorts, or golf, that's what this channel is about. And we would love to be your one-stop resource. Give us a call at 480-660-5974 and we'll take great care of you. Text or call day or night, anytime. We'd be happy to chat with you. Until next time, Phoenix, keep it classy.